continuing from a previous video where we created a kinematic connection. Today we'll replace one of the components with a rigid one. So here we'll begin by creating a new set of simulation files starting from our original by saving them as a new name and I'll just increment from our number three to four. Then we'll go to the idealized part where we'll hide half of our bodies and we'll put in some points. And these are going to be the endpoints of our rigid body that we're going to put in in place of our flexible body for our connecting rod. Now if we want to account for the dynamic effects of the mass of the connecting rod, we're going to need to assign a density to it. And we'll do that by assigning a material which has a density in its physical properties. And we'll be able to use that by creating a concentrated mass representation of the connecting rod. So here let's go ahead and update the body because it looks like we don't have all of it there. And then we can use that body with its assigned density to create a 0D mass representation of it with the create lump mass at center of gravity command. So there you can see our lump mass at the CG. And we also need those points, so let's go ahead and edit our FEM to bring those points in that we created in our idealized part. And then we can use those points to create our rigid link. I'm going to do this in two methods. The first is if you don't care about the dynamic effects or the mass of that link, you can just create a rigid link directly across from each endpoint. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and delete our flexible representation, the tet mesh of our connecting rod. And also so we can see this better, I'll go ahead and turn off the solid body representation of it as well. So now if we want to include that mass, we need to create, instead of one rigid link spanning between our crank and our piston, what we'll do is we'll create two. So the first here, I'll edit the first one to include the endpoint being at our concentrated mass. And then we'll create a new one that will go from that concentrated mass to our point that we created earlier. So now to connect in those rigid links to our kinematic connections, we have some universal connections that we've created earlier and you'll see that the representation is not valid because it's missing its target too and I'm going to respecify that as a single point and I'll do that for both ends All right, so now we just need to update to fully realize our universal connections, and we're ready to solve. So we'll reuse the gravity that we had assigned for a load. And here I'll pause the video. We can take a quick look at the simulation control monitor and see that the solution is progressing as we expect. And here in the bottom right hand corner of the solution monitor we'll see the total elapsed time once it's completed. So let's go ahead and take a look at our results.
and we'll look at displacements across all of our time steps. We'll animate across the iterations. And that's how we can replace a flexible component with a rigid one.